So I think it's time to let's go, right? So hello everyone and welcome. Hey, how you doing out there? So we are taking a look to into Sound Iron Sound Iron's latest library Hyperion Brass elements. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe and the bell button down below. If you want to keep updated with upcoming streams, etc. And also, of course, in the video description, there's a link to the CTO Discord server. Join that. Nice little communication going on there. We are at close to 400 members there, so it's growing by the day. So thanks to everyone who already jumped on there and uh, is active. I should be more active there, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks, Ersik. Uh, that camera was definitely a good idea, for sure. So let's change screen here and bring the music a little down. So there we go. Sound Iron Hyperion Brass Elements was well, just released a little bit ago. It's on Enterprise for $79. And this is a true hands, first hands-on experience today because uh, I just finished downloading. I haven't played a single note with it. I actually need to install it. So let's do that quickly. Uh, finish downloading and I know where it is. It is here. Sound iron, there we go. Hyperion Brass Elements, select folder, install. So that's done. Okay, Sound Iron Hyperion Brass is installed. And let's open the template in the back while we talk and look what this thing is. So Hyperion Brass Elements, what is it? Universal Brass and some library built for everyone. It was recorded with uncompromising engineering precision you better. And then hand edited and carefully balanced to achieve a new benchmark in quality and playability. We set out to strike the ideal balance between polished refinement and natural humanism for maximum creative flexibility, advanced utility and acoustic realism. That's a tongue twister right there. This symphonic brass library is a robust musical production workhorse that will serve you well, whether you're a working composer, student, producer, songwriter, teacher, arranger, band, sound designer, or are just curious about creating your own music. Great! So, and the lovely folks at Sound Iron were kind enough to provide a giveaway copy today. So if you want to, you can also save these 79 bucks enterprise. All you got to do, first of all, you can check the rest out yourself. Let me put the link down. It's also in the video description below. And all you got to do to be eligible for a giveaway copy is to hop over to this Facebook post and leave a comment below. There you go. And if you uh, have been following this channel for a while, you know how the drill goes. We have a trusty comment picker that selects one random comment. Right now we are looking at 17 comments likely going to grow. So has Cubase loaded? Oh, <laughs> yeah. There, please. Okay, now I <laughs> forgot that. Sorry. Um, now we can take a look at the interface quickly. This is what it looks like. Uh, look, doesn't it look beautiful? Very brassy. And what, what is it? So it's a contact player library, so you don't need the full version. And what else? What else? Uh, it's five gigs, I think, in size. 4.71. There we go. Uh, six master and legato section presets, trumpet, tenor, tr tenor trombones, horns, euphoniums, bass trombones, and tubas. Sustains true legato, flutter tongue, staccatos, double and triple tongue, and dynamic expressions. 12,800 samples in 24 bit 48 kilohertz. Multi dynamic sustains with smooth real time control over natural vibrato and dynamic transitions. I'm very curious to check it out. I, again, have not played a single note with this library. This is the, sorry, 
this is a true hands-on experience. So it's uh, like the same as you where to get the library and unpack it for the first time to check it out. That's what we're going to do today. Ah, And that's worth a corona. So cheers, everyone. Hey, Alec. Nice to see you as well. So Cubase, where are we? Oh, we have loaded. We have lift off. Okay, good. Uh, let's close all folders, shall we? So that looks a little better. And to make this as comparable as possible, I'm going to create a new instance of contact that runs straight through the stereo out so no processing whatsoever on the signal hey cloud jumper thanks for asking i'm doing fine over here lots of work and uh, as you can see just installed and there it is in all its glory so it's a library panel uh, panel library and let's dive straight in and see what it sounds like i may mute the underlying audio Thank you. Bye bye. So, first patch. Let's get a little more comfy position here. What's happening? Why is there stuff going on? Du, 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 du. Oh, by the way, let me know the audio other than the crackles we just had is fine. Uh, I'm not really sure why this is doing it. It may be due to the fact... You know what? Let's uh, do this a little differently. Uh, let's start with an empty project. Just a quick moment. Hey, Craig. So Sound Iron is in the house. If you have any questions on the library, uh, we have the man in the chat to answer them. So let's start with an empty project. Same thing. There we go. Okay, let's take a quick look at the interface. What do we have? Uh, these are the articulations that you have available via key switches, which are located down here, as it seems. We have uh, a lot of patches. Master Legato, Master Legato. So they are always differentiated between Master Patch with all the articulations and Legato Patch. Let's quickly check out the Legato. Very curious how that sounds like. Honestly, I'm a sucker for horns. When I got a new brass library, I usually always check the horns first. So... Again, let me know if the audio is fine. Cloud jumper to the question why Cubase. Um, I've been working a lot with like my Quickload template added with V Pro instances, so it's kind of like a um, bigger template version. And Cubase just is more stable with big templates with V Pro than uh, Studio One is. So I still work in Studio One from time to time, depending on what type of music I'm working on. But when I work with my template, usually it's uh, 
Cubase. So what do we have? We have body. What does that do? Seems like to add a little bit of lower mids. Attack should be what the name implies. Yeah, it's a softer attack. Offset should cut into the sample, I guess. Might be interesting for short articulations. Release is the release, obviously. There is some reverb on top, I feel. Space, there we go. Okay. Let's switch that off for a second. So the release was all the way up. Make sure to check out the easy lead articulation. I will, I will. Um, release volume, okay, so you can determine how much of the release you're going to hear. Okay, understood. Vibrato. Vibrato is not assigned to anything, so let's quickly assign that to CC21, which usually always is vibrato. It's very subtle. So that's the top row. The swell button is uh, connected to mod wheel, so that's dynamic control. Let's turn the space back on, it just sounds a little nicer. So yeah, then you have the articulation pains. You uh, pain you have from C minus two to B minus two, so three by four, so twelve slots. And if you click a single slot, you can change stuff. And you can also, I think, change the key switch when you click on a note. You can to like a dynamic. Truly got an F. Where's the easy lead? Maybe it's in the master patch. Uh, you can change the key switch in the middle section of the GUI. Okay. All right, yeah, down here you can change the key switch. Understood. Okay, let's check the master patch. Legato sounds... We will look at that in more detail, but it sounds very good so far. And here, let's look at the different articulations. So we have sustains dynamic. Very smooth blend between the dynamic layers. Check my headphone volume. And I think I need to turn down the, what do you call it, the gate on my mic. It's a little 
it's a little too much. So let's go with 30. That should be better. Not so much gate on the mic, so it doesn't cut out all the time. Sorry for that. So, um, where were we? Sustains dynamic. Let's quickly check that out. Oh, that's quite a lot of articulations that we have here. Holy moly. Easy lead. What does that do? There's definitely um, an offset. a little later than it sustains. Make sure you set it tight. Okay, let's quickly check out the uh, different articulations. So we have sustains dynamic and we have the individual sustains, piano, mezzo, forte and forte. We have flutter tongue. Just checking them out. Staccato dynamic. More like a Mercado, to be honest. But we have Staccatism as well. Oh, here's the tight button. Holy moly, that's a significant difference. Okay, that's way tighter. Then we have multi staccato dynamic. Oh, wow. So the module still controls the uh, velocity on this one. Let's set that back to... Can I set that back to lose? No. Just doing a double tongue. So, what, what do you say? Also click the velocity sensitivity, so response, uh, response to velocity when you play velocity sensitivity. Where is that? Where is that? I mean, it's a little bit like cheating when you have the developer in the chat and tell you everything you need to do when you do a first hands-on. Um, I mean, in the velocity range, I understand that. Oh, that cuts down where it reacts. And here is velocity sensitive. Got it. Is that repetition tempo based? So when we are in tempo 80, say? Not really hearing a difference. Um. Doesn't seem to be affected by the tempo. Twenty. 
Craig, that would be nice to know if that is actually tempo dependent. Well, I know that these are, you can sync them. So when you bring that down. Yeah, these are tempo syncable. Auto release or play through. Yeah, so it plays no matter when you lift uh, the keys. Crescendo high, crescendo low. Oh, it's like a medium crescendo and a loud crescendo. Understood. Crescendo short. Hey, Alex. Do decrescendo. Okay. So the double and triple tongs are just the BPM they were recorded. Decrescendo low. So many articulations to choose from. That's more like a sforzando, but we have a sforzando as well. Well, actually, that's a sforzando. I apologize. You can sing that as well. Thanks, Alex. I'm good. How are you? We have swelts. Shorts. And that's about it. We have none. None is very quiet. I have to admit, I'm not really understanding what the what the um, easy lead patch is for. Doesn't feel very playable, to be honest. There's kind of a delay, like an offset. It's like 60, 70 milliseconds, something like that. Hey, Bernie. Okay, understood. It's like a playable patch, but <clears throat> okay. Maybe there's a there's a uh, offset because it needs to determine whether it's short or long note. Anyway, let's check out some of the other patches. We have bass trombones. They're very nasty. I like it. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So where we have, where we have, where we have. Oh, velocity sensitive. I like that. Sounds nice. Of 
Question is if you get the same sound with a... Would be interesting because otherwise I personally feel that uh, having the repetition patches not tempo sync makes them kind of obsolete a little bit because they only work in the tempo that they're recorded in so makes honestly it makes no really sense to me so when we do the I guess that 16th so let's record like this and I mean when you repeat like that with the same velocity you hear the you start to notice the only four round robins um, not really sure if there's a way to manipulate them for random let's shorten the notes a little bit it's better when you use different dynamics but honestly uh yeah if you have them all on the same dynamic you start to hear the cycle where the round robins run through Although it's fine. Sorry, I was mistaken. Actually, it's it's okay. And usually you don't expose it like that. So, why is the velocity range down here? There we go. So, that's staccatism. When we can, let's hear what the loose version sounds like. So the tight definitely cleans it up a lot. Thanks, Jean. Welcome. Yeah, it's a true hands-on today. Haven't played with that library before. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's check the euphoniums just for the sake of having a different sound here. Loading, loading, loading. There we go. <clears throat> Staccatissimo, dynamics, velocity sensitive, tight. Sounds like this. Oh, maybe we should bring that up an octave. Who activated Legato on this? No one. Why is it not playing? There is a there is a arpeggio running. Huh. Turn it off. Okay, so that's the euphonium. It sounds a little more mellow. The horns, which should. That's great for chords. With a swell, let's sync that. That's very nice. What 
What does react mean? Reactive. Let's check the sus vibrato. I don't really like the vibrato sound there. Can anybody explain to me what reactive means? I mean, honestly, for, for like $79 Enterprise, that's quite a lot of content that you get for a bra section. And it sounds really lovely. Let's check out some of the other uh, tabs we have down here. Okay, so reactive means it reacts to the mod wheel, so that's fine. We can also solo and do it. What? Oh, okay. By the way, in case sometimes you're wondering, oftentimes you see explanations for the little buttons down here in that area. So like, I just moved my mouse here and then it says solo switches the legato mode between solo and duet. Uh, that's often overlooked that people don't really recognize what that actually means. So we can blend between clean and vibrato. Sustains clean. Sustain vibrato. And blend. And this is not assigned to any MIDI CC, but I think I could put that onto mod wheel as well. Yeah, and then I can blend between non vibrato and sustain vibrato. Sucker for trumpet staccatissimos, uh, trombone staccatissimos. So, okay, let's see. We have a fact. Filter should be self-explanatory. Ouch. Who the hell puts the resonance in a default patch up like that? <laughs> Will definitely kill your ears. So, filter for sound design stuff. Compressor. That's a little bit of body. Equalizer. Uh, hypes up a little bit the high frequency content gives a little push like the smiley EQ curve so if you want a more natural sound just turn it off It's a little too hyped for my taste, so it sounds actually better without the EQ, but I mean, I get it. You can turn it off if you don't like it, so that's fine. The space. That's pretty clever. So you can position the brass where you want to have it. Trombones go all the way to the back, of course. 
so nobody complains when they play very loud. And they also have a convolution reverb, which works with the same positioning system. That's pretty cool. So. Let's put the trombones in the forest. Okay, you can do some sound design with that as well. Let's stick to the algorithmic one. Maybe we work a little bit and see how that behaves in the mixing set. Uh, to Play assist, what does that do? Understood. So if you cannot play, you just change the scale and then you can play C major and it plays E major. <laughs> it's a little strange playing like that when you're used to have the G sharp in there. Uh, but I can see the use of that for someone who's not as fluent in music theory or is not fluent in playing keys. Uh, that may be helpful, uh, just not something that I feel I need right now. And we have an arpeggiator. <laughs> mode I have to find out how that works can I play chords instead of arpeggiated stuff direction chord there we go I'm not really the guy that like connects brass with an arpeggiator uh, for some sound design use. I can totally see that, but not really my cup of tea, but fine. I'm more interested in the sounds themselves and how they work in the context. We haven't checked the trumpets yet. So actually, a uh, quick question, Craig, if you can answer that, is the, if I turn on legato for the sustained dynamics patch, is that the same as the true legato patch? It doesn't sound like that. So when I compare that to the true legato patch. So it sounds like the in the master patch it's an uh, artificial or uh, scripted legato, right? Oh, there is no switching through the patches. Just wanted to hear the shorts and the trumpets, see how they behave. Do, 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 do. Or 
Great. And then we have some ensemble patches that they pre-made, like combination patches. So I don't think that they are recorded in, in Unison. I think they're just layered. So you could create, recreate these patches with putting two patches together. Tuba, horn, tenor bone, and trumpet. Where's the low stuff? No. Uh, you can go tubas, bass, bone, euphonium, trumpet. It's all of them. So, I have to be honest, I'm not really digging that. So, I rather prefer to, to lay them on my own. So, if I say, for example, let's put together the tuba and the bass trombones. See how they behave in the low end. That's useful. We bring in the, the horns below that as well. I can see that working. May take a little time to build your own multis, but uh, absolutely possible to, to get some decent sound out of that. But yeah, let's see how that actually behaves in, in the context of, of writing something. I mean, brass lends itself to some, some war, fallen hero type of stuff. So let's see if we can do something like that. Uh, before we go on, of course, so quick question. Uh, the question was in the chat, uh, is it worth it? It's $79 for a heap of articulations on a full brass ensemble with true legato sampling and uh, heaps of articulations, I think it really makes sense. Funny enough, this interface looks totally different than the one we have. Is that an old one? <laughs> I have to check that. Uh, so I think for 79 or even 99, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, it's uh, The sound is cool. It's... Definitely, I mean, there's it's a four gigabyte brass library, and if you compare that to others, 20, 50, 60, 100 gigabyte libraries, of course there's a difference. I mean, there's a reason why they call it brass elements. So it's not a full-blown brass library like other competitors out there. And uh, given that Hyperion strings had different uh, tiers like uh, elements and I don't know, light or whatever the easiest version were on theirs. I think a full version in the works as well. I probably can imagine that the brass will get a big version as well. But uh, it's lightweight. It's uh, easily playable. It's light on the CPU. Yeah, definitely. I can see that as a laptop uh, library for sure. So it's, it's pretty small in terms of footprint. So let's start with the uh, euphoniums. I like that sound for some chords. Why is the arpeggio on by default here?
Okay, let's go with the stain dynamics. Let's actually put the vibrato on the blend knob as well. So I will turn the attack a little down to not have that as harsh. Maybe put the blend on a on a dedicated controller. Um, does that react to CC11? No. So we can put CC11 here. Okay, let's define a tempo. Maybe 90 is already good. A little slower. What key are we going for? Any suggestions? Maybe something like E flat or so. I heard that horns like E flat. Okay, let's try that. We'll do the dynamics later. That's actually 6-4, um, so let's change that quickly. So let's, rec uh, these are <clears throat> euphoniums and most importantly, brass is always yellow. There we go. So. We have the euphoniums. Let's save that quickly as a uh, hype brass elements. So, let's record the mod wheel. I think that was already too much. That down a little. And just a quick reminder uh, that you can, if you don't intend to put some money into this, you can still win it. Thanks to the nice guys at Sun Iron. We have a free giveaway copy today. What are we looking at right now? Well, of course. Cannot get any information. Get comments. Oh, are you kidding me? I just logged in. Yes, that's me. So. Oh, 58 comments. Weren't we just at 17? Holy hell. So. Let's duplicate this, put some low end below that. Two bars. Yes.
empty all slots. Oh, so it doesn't. When you click on search, you have this little uh, view that we had on the website here. So it does exist in the library. I have to admit that I don't really understand why you have to include, when, when you have dynamic patches from Piano to Fortissimo, why you have to do all these individual ones, like just the Mezzo Forte, just the Forte, other than performance issue reasons, when you just can play a three dynamic patch, not really sure. So I would always go with a, with a dynamic versions where every dynamic is included, depending on how hard you play it. But well, it is there. So if you feel like you need that, then you can do that. I certainly don't. Maybe let's go with the legato for the tubas. What chords did I actually play? <laughs> Forgot it. Uh, okay, E flat. So it's actually in B major. That's tuba legato. Save the lows for later. Five, six. Let's already start to, to place them a little bit in the space field. So tubas go a little bit to the right in the back and the euphoniums, well, let's have them be sitting a little to the left, maybe a little bit behind the horns. I will put the horns in front of them. That's at least what I think. I feel we can speed it up a little now, since we are in 6-4. And usually I start my cues on the three, so. Let's duplicate this and on the second repetition we can just spice up the volume a little bit just to change it a bit to prior. <clears throat> Not really sure where we're going melody wise but let's load in the horns. Legato? Let's try Legato on the horns. So I'll space them a little in front of the euphoniums, maybe not as far left, since they are intended to play the main melody. <clears throat> which we can easily remedy by adding an effects track. Let's go with, uh, let's go with cinematic rooms on this one. So, 
so not con room sin room Damn it! So what are we going with? Uh, um, um, um. Let's go with, let's go with a large hall. Just standard three seconds. That's pretty big already. So I wanna go wet. Let's see how it sounds. That is, French horns. So French horns. Uh, audio sense to cinematic rooms. Let's go with minus fifteen. That sounds nice. Oh, when you play rather soft, you get a really nice legato transition. Sorry, I haven't been following the chat. Uh, hey, Ruben Melia. Euphoniums. Yeah, euphoniums are like the soft horns, I like to call them. So space, yeah, let's keep them there. Let's see if we find some nice melodic content on top. They sound a little too direct. Maybe I put them a little bit too much up front. Put them back a little. And actually, I want to have the horns in the middle. Okay, let's see if we can come up with something. bad one two three four five six place again let's find a melody in a few seconds Getting there. Okay, let's try that. Two, three, four, five. 
five, six. A have gotten a little wonky here. Too much. Actually, let's go from the F. What I'm hearing is like like a, a counter melody already that kind of gets in when the horns hold the long note. Just not really sure if I'm going to do that with tenor trombones or with trumpets. You guys, you guys go a little bit here. Let's try that. is not reacting on the softest velocity because I don't understand why would you put that like that in an initial patch okay Kind of like that. Not the best thing I've ever done, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I think I gotta get some... Need a little bit of air, so... Whew. There, it's coming. It's coming. My one and only truest fan. giving me a blowjob. Let's put that an octave up. That was bad. I kind of like that, but um, don't want to hard quantize. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, I tell. Sad. So horns can get a little more room. Horns get a room. And the tuba, not as much. Don't want to wash out the low end there too much. And the euphoniums can actually get quite a lot, I guess. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, if you repeat something, it sounds like you intended to do it that way. So let's just duplicate the melody here. 
Well, what we can do is um, harmonize that a little bit with some trumpet. Let's go legato as well. Is there any kind of delay compensation with the library right now? I don't do any, so um, it feels very on, on time. So when I turn the click on... I feel that is a little long. Come on, die away. Um. feel like I should be doing that. Houston. Uh, there. Thank you. Like there's something missing here. Kind of. No, the one before was better. Right, it sits pretty much on the grid without any uh, offset. I 
kind of like, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not going very much forward with that, but I like the idea of having that little walk there from the trumpet underneath the horn. Let's quick, oops. Let's quickly quantize that to the grid. A few things I want to change. That's trumpet for f first and foremost. Then I want to move them a little bit to the right. Then I want to put the vibrato on the on the mod wheel as well. And actually, let's try the. They have a polyphonic legato mode. So let's try that. So I feel that this legato needs to get a little bit of an offset. So like minus 40 or something. Sounds a little behind. But it seems that using the polyphonic legato causes some hanging notes. Let's see. So like this. Not really sure where we're going with this, but I like the overall sound, I have to admit. Yeah, that MIDI note just barked. Spice the low end up a little by doubling the tuba with the bass trombone just to give a little more weight to the low end here. At least I think so. So there's tuba's trulegato. Let's go with the bass trombone's trulegato, which we then should also space a little bit to the back right. Well, actually, since we can do whatever we want, let's put them a little bit to the back left to have the low end like coming from both corners of the room. Nah, that's too much dynamics going on here. I want to have that a little softer. So bring that down. Bass trombones don't need to bark all the way over. I just want to try one thing. And just want to see how it sounds. 
when I when I duplicate the melody with a string line on top there. So let's go with uh, da, 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 da. Nope. Not now. Eh V star. Little bit of Vista in my life. <laughs> hmm, let's see. Just want to see how it sounds if we put some strings on top. Actually, let's do them not in the high end. Or no, we can, we can, ah, I have an idea. Let's do the violas first, an octave lower. Uh, what strings? These are performance samples, Vista. Let's do the violas first. Okay, let's try these. Okay, just messing up the melody there. One last try. Okay, and then we do the violins on top. The same line, but an octave higher. Not the cellos. Oh, come on. There we go. Violent. So let's put these on top. Kind of like the little bit of <clears throat> counter movement there. So, <clears throat> but yeah, long story short, I'm not gonna keep on working on that. It's just an idea to to sketch out. Uh, I think it's it's quite a good amount of value that you get for 79, respectively 99 bucks. There's really a lot of stuff in there, and I didn't even look into all the other types of articulations. Didn't use any short notes or all the swells. Um, but for the price, it's pretty amazing what type of content you get. I really like it. And uh, I'm really curious what they do with the full version of it when you get, I probably assume, more round robins, more types of articulations. Um, it sounds like a decent brass library. That's all I can say. I really like the sound. It sounds very mellow in this setting.
so we could go on with that, uh, but I think you get the idea of it. So last thing to do is to actually give you guys and girls the last chance to drop your comment. What's going on? No. Uh, to leave your comment underneath the Facebook post that I just posted to make sure that you can possibly win the library. But you have to comment on that, right? So right now we are looking at 72 comments. That's quite a lot. Seven more and we have the same amount of comments that the library costs right now. One dollar for each comment. So all I can say is uh, thanks Sound Iron for providing a giveaway copy for today. So... If you're interested in checking out more from the library, you can jump over to the website. It's also linked in the video description below. If you haven't heard yet, there is a notification bell button and a subscribe button underneath the video that you can hit if you're interested in more of that type of content. And also make sure to check out my production music course under courses.composingtutorials.com. It's only about four more days left for the intro price until this thing goes to full price. Check it out. Lots of descriptions here, what's in there. I think, uh, meanwhile, we are at more than 100 students, which is awesome. Uh, I've gotten some really, really cool feedback. And uh, yeah, it's on Enterprise for four more days. Without further ado, let's jump in and see who won the library today. 76. You guys and girls ready? So let's roll. Who is going to win Hyperion Brass Elements? I just need to turn the volume a little bit up. So, winner of Hyperion Brass Elements today is... 3, 2, 1, here we go. The winner is... Mm, Alan Spiliak, I guess it's pronounced. Alan. Congratulations! So, we'll get in touch on Facebook and sort everything out. Thanks, Sound Iron, for providing the showcase copy and the giveaway copy. I see you on Wednesday for the next one. Then we take a look at Fracture Sound's box library. That's gonna be interesting. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I see you on the next one. Bye-bye.